Well, hello everybody. We're going to tackle some wild and crazy trig functions tonight. In fact, they fall underneath the umbrella. We call them sinusoidal graphs. And basically, that's a combination of either the sine function or the cosine function. It doesn't really, that particular family doesn't include tangent. They're referring to the, the, the trig functions that oscillate up and down real rhythmically. And tangent doesn't behave quite that nicely with all those vertical asymptotes and stuff. So we're going to take a look at this particular family of graphs um, and consider... Uh, the general form here, sine of b times the quantity x plus c, uh, we'll close that up and put plus d at the end, and what do each of these crazy letters stand for? That's what I want to go through here real quick. The, the absolute value of a represents the amplitude of your graph, that's how I want you to think of that as how high or how low above the midline you dip or reach. Um, let's see, b represents the frequency. That is the number of cycles you'll see uh, between 0 and 2 pi is our standard interval. Let's see, now 2 pi divided by b in that particular case is the period of the graph. And of course, that's the number of radians it takes to complete one of those cycles. Uh, let's see, the c value is what we call your phase shift or your horizontal shift. And again, it's going to be the opposite of what you perhaps think it should be. When you see plus C, it's actually left C. And if you saw minus C, it's to the right C. And the very last letter dangling outside of those parentheses, emphasis on the fact that it's outside, the D is your vertical shift. And that one is easy to read. It is exactly what you think it should be. If you see plus D, we're going up. And if you see minus D, we're going down. All right, for this particular batch of questions, they want us to determine the period of each of these sinusoidal graphs and expect our, express our answers in exact form. I'm going to add just a little bit to that. I also want us to find the amplitude uh, first, and then we'll identify the frequency, and then eventually after we claim the frequency, we'll go get the period. On this first one, the absolute value of the coefficient here is 6. The frequency is the 4. And therefore, the period is going to be 2 pi divided by 4. And as we reduce that, we get pi over 2. So that would be a kind of a challenging one to graph just because you'd have to fit or squeeze so many cycles in between 0 and 2 pi. But certainly doable. In fact, we may see that later in the video tonight. For my second one, I've got an amplitude. I'm going to take the absolute value of that leading coefficient and get 8. My frequency this time is in terms of pi. It would be the coefficient of x pi over 3. Now the period is going to be 2 pi divided by that frequency. What I'm going to do is I'm going to treat it like a complex fraction. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 3. That's going to give me 6 pi over pi. Of course the pi's cancel and we get a period of 6. So that would mean 6, it would take me 6 radians to complete one cycle. Notice that's not 6 pi radians, it's just plain old 6. And um, we certainly need to respect the fact that there's no pi there. Um, on part C, perhaps a little bit of a bear trap, we're going to take the absolute value of negative 12 and get an amplitude of positive 12. The negative just turns it upside down eventually when we graph it. The frequency is going to be two-thirds. Um, and then the period is going to be 2 pi divided by two-thirds. Multiply the top and the bottom by 3 again because it's a complex fraction. We're going to get 6 pi. I'm going to get you started on this particular one, but this is going to be the MIG one that I look for in your notebook tomorrow. Um, in fact, we're going to do this on a, actually, um, we're going to do this on a separate sheet of paper. You can just rip a, you know, a half sheet out of your notebook or whatever. We're actually going to turn this in before your grizzly tomorrow just because the, the, the timing's weird and we got a short week and we don't have enough time to go over in class. So I'm going to need you to turn it in before the grizzly. And, uh, and I'm going to get you warmed up. I'm going to get you started and I'm going to let you finish it. And so the first particular graph is already done for you. You notice there's an amplitude of 3. And that's where you see the, the highest height and the, the lowest depth right there, negative 3. Uh, the frequency is a 1. And basically what that means is uh, starting at 0 and ending at 2 pi, you see one complete cycle. So every 2 pi radians, you see one complete cycle. Now the picture is showing a grand total of 4 pi radians by the time you go from negative 2 pi um, over here all the way across to positive 2 pi that's a grand total of 4 pi and that's why you're seeing two complete cycles one there and then another one right there so here's what I need you guys to do on your own here right on that same grid right there I want you to graph this function three times the cosine of 2x notice the the amplitude stayed the same but the frequency changed so we're gonna see a few more cycles within that interval um, preferably if you can use a different color 
uh, pen or, or pencil or some kind of marker on all of these. That would really knock my socks off tomorrow. Um, and of course then we're going to address part B here and then I want you to go ahead and graph this function right here that has a frequency of one half and then again let's answer part D the best you can so use a couple different colors get those three graphs all on the same axis take, an, um, you know, take a look at how that frequency is going to impact the graphs all right, if you had any trouble with the last one, just pay attention here, and, and perhaps the way that I go about this one will help you on the previous one. As I get ready to graph this function, I notice that the amplitude is 2. That's going to be my height. The frequency is 4. Wow, that's tough. We're going to get 4 cycles in there uh, if we went all the way from 0 to 2 pi. And then the period would be 2 pi divided by 4, which reduces all the way down to pi over 2. So let's see what they wanted. They, want all, they just want us to graph one full cycle. Uh, to the left and to the right of the y-axis. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, all right, there's 0. I'm going to say, here's my pi over 2 way over here, which means pi over 4 is right in the middle. Um, on the left side would be negative pi over 4 and negative pi over 2. And now I'm going to get ready to graph these rascals. Now it is the sine curve, so I'm going to start at the origin. I'm going to go up to a height of 2 and I'm going to go down to a depth of negative 2 and finish with that first cycle. There's my nice sine curve. We're just going to kind of work backwards following the pattern that's already been set before us. Let's see here. A little something like that. So that's what one full period or one full cycle to the left and to the right of the y-axis would look like. Notice I scaled the x-axis according to the given period of that graph. Our last one for the night's a little extra exciting. It's got a few uh, poses a few new twists for us, uh, which is always exciting. Uh, part A here. Let's jump right into it. They want to know the exact period of this sinusoidal graph. So I'm going to say, well, I, I saw right here that my frequency was pi over eight. So the period's going to be two pi divided by that pi over eight. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by eight. Treat it like a complex fraction. I'm going to get sixteen. Let's see, 16 pi all over pi, reduce that down to 16. So interesting note here, be, um, the period is just plain old 16 radians, it's not 16 pi radians, and because this answer is not in terms of radians, I'm not going to label my x-axis in terms of uh, pi at all, I'm just going to label in terms of normal whole numbers like 16. The amplitude was the absolute value of negative 2, which turns out to be positive 2. Of course, that negative is going to flip it upside down. The midline is another fancy name for vertical shift. How far up are we lifting the graph? And so I'm going to say three units up. And then the last thing they want us to do is to sketch this function on the axes, one full period on both sides. So I need to go 16 radians to the right. And I also need to go 16 radians to the left, so negative 16. I'm going to break that up into even groups, so it looks like we're going to go count by 4s, 4, 8, 12, and 16. Same thing here on the negative side, just breaking it into nice intervals. And let's see what we got here. Now, the cosine curve is going to start upside down at a depth of, no, wait a minute, I've got to move the midline. So let's shift everything up three units. We're going to pretend that this blue dotted line is the new x-axis. All right, we're going to go two units below that function, or below that midline. Let's see what we got here. So right there. And then we're going to cross at four. We're going to peak at eight. We're going to now be two units above. We're going to then cross at 12 and bottom out at 16 again. So we're going to round it off, paying attention to our concavity. All right, so there's one full cycle. Now I'm just going to follow that precedence that's already been set on the other side. Pay attention to your concavity. Make sure we're not too straight at any one moment. And that looks like one complete cycle to both the left and the right of the y-axis for me. Notice the, the key there is I wanted to give you a period that was not in terms of pi. And notice how we did not label the x-axis in terms of pi. We just labeled it in terms of whole numbers. And we also shifted it three units up. So good luck. Don't forget to go back and uh, finish that problem we left you with there, kind of in the middle of the video. And we'll turn that in before tomorrow's big grizzly. Good luck on the grizzly. Hope we take a nice big jump. Hope you get a nice reward for all the hard work you've put in this week.